Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for jumping on the train and going on a journey. And this time we're going on the way back train. We're going back probably to the late 1800s or early 1900s. Certainly no later than 1905 and so this is the pen in all of its pieces. And the first thing that strikes you is this is the feed. It's an over under feed. It's certainly about as simplistic a feed as you could possibly get. Some grooves in it. Take a look at the nib. We'll get some indication as to what kind of pen this is. Yes, it's a maybe Todd. You know, it's a small nib, but that's not unusual for pens of this nature. It's not a large pen, it's a small pen. The real identification is found on the barrel. It has engraving as you expect from this type of pen. It is a swan pen. Nice swan logo there. And we'll see there's three patent dates. March 6th, 88, and July 9th, 95, 1895, and it's maybe Todd and Bard, New York. And they also identified their pens with some uh, markings here at the end of the barrel, 3212 medium. So like Waterman, the last digit represents the nib size. It went from zero to three. Interesting that zero was broad and three was fine, and they also made a medium broad which was a, a number one. The 3000 series had these two gold bands on the barrel. I have not done anything to clean this up or restore it. Uh, this pen is in I think excellent condition considering it's well over 120 years old somewhere in that range. So we're gonna you know, maybe just clean it up a little bit, maybe take off a little bit of that oxidation. You know, the cap also has a nice little swan trademark on it. This pen has survived well. And they also use this, I'd call it an ink agitator, ink retainer, or whatever. This sat in the barrel. I'll have to do some more research to see how this whole thing fits together, but I thought the best way to start this was it in pieces and when I'm doing a restoration, especially if I want to do a video about it, I like to take the pen apart first just so I can make certain it's worth doing a restoration and I feel comfortable that I'll get it into working order. Here's a book that I've uh, bought a, <clears throat> to really explore uh, maybe the maybe Todd pens in America. Here's a uh, little description from a catalog that shows the 3212 pen. And this model, I think, was made for um, at least probably 20 years or so in, in certain different formats. But I think this is an excellent example of this type of pen and an excellent example of a pen from this time period. So this is my uh, modest collection of uh, maybe Todd Swan pens. The one I showed you is the earliest eyedropper version. And then they started doing lever fills, probably in the late 18 to, to 20s. And there's your self-filling pen. Now we got maybe Todd and Company New York, and there's uh, some later patent dates now on these. Now this is again an unrestored, it's in pretty good shape. In the vintage years, the fountain pen business was very, very competitive. You know, they potentially had millions of customers and everybody needed a fountain pen, but Schaefer patented the lever filler in 1914. A few years later, Waterman got around it by designing a box lever design and they had their patent for that. And maybe Todd got their patent in 1919 and what they did was is they put a little notch in the lever and there's a little wire there which kind of holds that lever in place and so then they were able to make lever pens without violating Schaefer's patent or having to pay Schaefer to use their patent. 
They also uh, did some celluloids. This is, you know, not in a very good shape, but again, they were consistent with their labeling. And this is a Swallow, which was their lower end brand, so that might explain a little bit of it. They did a lot of uh, metal pens. I just have two examples. These are unrestored. You know, we could clean them up. We could do some work on them, but right now uh, it's not a focus of mine. This is an interesting um, celluloid model. And now we see the introduction of a clip on the pen. And they continue to specialize in your hard rubber, black and gold, as they uh, sometimes called them. This is just a classic, simple example of a nice thin black pen. Also in very, very good shape. You know, if I was to work on this, I'd have to pop out that nib and feed, you know, and, and do some work on it to get it in working order. But sometimes it's nice just to keep a pen as received. And I guess this is the cream of the crop, if you might say that. This is an eternal pen. This pen has a very, um, what do you want to call it, mixed history about it. When I uh, bought this pen, it's a 46 eternal. I got this pen in some type of flea market and I was playing around with it and I broke the tipping material off of one tine. So that disappointed me. The pen also didn't have a band here at the bottom, so it had two deficits to it. So I found someone who uh, would restore the pen and also fix the nib for me for a very reasonable price at that time. So I sent it to them and a few weeks later I got it back and Mike Masiamo actually did the nib on it, which if I'd have known that, I would have had him try to make it a little bit more flexible, because this is a pretty stiff nib, signature nib, as, as I would refer to him at. It's, this pen has also been a little bit over-polished, as you can see, a lot of that in, you know, imprint there on the barrel has been worn away, but it's just a nice example of a pen of that nature. And Swan continued to evolve and now we have a clip with a swan on it, and we also have an interesting swan at the top there. I think this, you know, is the same time maybe that Pelican was doing a similar type of thing. Again, they continued on to do uh, their nice barrel engraving, so it was easy to identify their pens. So that's, you know, like I say, a modest collection. I just wanted a, a kind of a variety from over a period of time to represent this very interesting, unique pen company. The pen's cleaned and reassembled and ready to go. I figured out that that's where that twisted wire went into that groove, into that unique feed system. And I violated one of my prime directives on refinishing vintage pens is I didn't clean and wax the barrel and cap before I started flushing them out and it brought out that oxidation the other thing that it emphasized was it looks like that's where the price sticker was there because it's not as oxidized there at the bottom of the cap. And the cap is loose. So over time, the dimensions of this pen have changed. And I could probably figure out some way of adding a little bit of material inside that cap to make it fit a little bit tighter. But I'm going to just ink it up just a little bit to show you how it writes because I think it would be Interesting to see how this over under feed works and how that nice soft nib puts down ink. This is the ink I put in the pen. Used, I used a syringe to fill it up. Well, I didn't really fill it up. I put about a milliliter and a half in. It should be enough for a writing test. This is a small light pen and it is almost weightless in the hand. As I mentioned you before the cap was eventually supposed to post really well on the back of that barrel, but over time dimensions have changed so the cap is loose. I did put that ink in here and uh, the ink took a while to work itself down into the nib and when it finally did it just gushed out. So uh, needless to say this will not be an everyday carry. But just let's see how that nib puts down that Rohern Klinger sepia ink.
I mean this is an extremely smooth nib it just glides across the paper very soft but you're not going to get a wet noodle out of this I think that feed system does work fairly well but like I say I don't trust this pen after it dumped most of its ink out and the cap has a hole at the top which to me doesn't make a lot of sense because that just allows air to flow through and ink to flow through so overall I'm happy I uh, got some ink in this pen and got it to write you know a pen from the 1900s um, if I understood a little bit more about how this system works maybe I could uh, get it to be a little bit more reliable but hey it is what it is so that's a quick look at some so I readjusted the mic it's a quick look at a, a vintage pen which you may never have heard about may never have seen there was a posting on Instagram of a similar pen which motivated me to bring this one out and put it through its paces so as a letter writing pen as a pen that sits on the desk I think this would work fine and as like most vintage pens are, that's an incredibly wet writer. It just lays down a ton of ink. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little way back trip to a pen from the early days of fountain pens. So may you find a nice writing instrument, be it vintage or be it modern, to Put some ink on paper, enjoy the pleasure of that experience, and we're going to say bye until the next video. It is about the smoothest pen I've ever written with.